Now the attackers, as you said, are much more sophisticated. What's going on in the ecosystem today? Hi, this is Shira Rubinoff. I'm here with Israel Mazin, CEO of Memsico. Israel, it's such a pleasure to be with you here again today. Thank you for having me, Shira. Yes, of course. And today I'm very excited about the topics we'll be discussing today. Firstly, we're going to discuss innovations in cybersecurity. And that's a huge topic and a topic that is expansive, a topic that's ever changing and really exploding across every ecosystem dealing with the different innovations coming up in cybersecurity. So what I want to talk about is to touch upon different emerging regulations and statistics that need a shift towards digital trust and customer protection. And I want to highlight customer protection. And I know that's something that you deal with a lot. So my first question to you is, how have cyber threats evolved in recent years and how should companies adapt their technology to address these changes? Yes, yeah, so actually there are a significant increase in cyber attacks in the last few years, yeah. especially because it's become easier for attackers. There are a few types of attackers, one more sophisticated hackers, also states, that uh, uh, and uh, but also uh, many hackers that are not sophisticated at all, but they have the kits uh, that like uh, for example uh, doing uh, attacks as a service, spoofing as a service, or other attacks. Or uh, today with AI, because in the last few years also AI uh, developed a lot, and in, and so a lot of cyber, it's easier to do cyber attacks using the AI that it's much easier to create these attacks. So there are a few types uh, when we are looking on these attacks, how it evolved. So there are more at, at actually penetration and to the organization, hack the organization to find vulnerabilities. Another uh, way is to all this uh, self-credential that you uh, of employees, uh, but also for from users of the organizations. Uh, trying to steal from the money after they steal their credential and transfer, uh, you know, uh, buy fake goods and many others. So what we see today is more and more uh, attacks that happening or directly to the organization or through the self-credential that it's easier even because when you employees or users fall to these scams, it's then much easier to penetrate and and the problem that uh, all of these attacks, what uh, we see more and more, unfortunately, in the last few years, that all, uh, they are stealing data, but also that uh, the ransomware that we see a lot, it's like organization, almost crime organization, where they're doing this ransomware. And uh, it's a, a lot of money that they, then the organization need to spend and pay uh, to release, for example, encrypted data, or that they'll not release and distribute their data uh, publicly uh, because this type of uh, crime and this type of attacks can destroy sometimes the organization because it shut them down. Yes. And interesting how you put that attacks as a service. We're used to in the industry as security as a service. And that is very widespread, especially the different highlights, highlighting points that you've made. And talking about ransomware and being proactive in your cybersecurity posture is critical for organizations, as you said, not just within the organization, but also customer facing, which points me now to something I really want to dive deeply into. And I know this is something very important to Mimsico, the importance of customer protection. So I'd like to know how you feel companies are protecting their customers from cyber attacks. And that's a very big question as well, because there's so many different points, but I know you have a very good handle on that. And I'd love to hear what you have to say. Yeah, so there are all these uh, solution in the market that it's more today doing like multi-factor authentication or biometric on other stuff. But still the customer, they, they less put emphasize on the customers and more on their employees or their organization. Uh, uh, but the problem is that even with all of this uh, multi-factor authentication, even by the way, with passwordless, still the hackers can find ways by men in the middle or by, uh, you know, all this uh, uh, social engineering to uh, scam these uh, users because they, most of the users are not sophisticated. So when they get email with like, for example, uh, fake sites or uh, uh, advertisement of fake sites, 
uh, they access to, to this site and uh, uh, then they put their credential. And now uh, because of the hacker are more sophisticated and using AI, even they know how to get from them the multi-factor authentication on the code or other stuff. And then they in, inside their, you know, uh, as a user, like the regular user. So today, the problem with many of these solutions that are less proactive and more reactive uh, to protect this user. I think that it's very important to focus and uh, increase the trust of the users, the protection of these users, because a lot of money, you know, theft by this way or fake uh, goods that are selling in this way and scam these users. No, that's very true. And I know some other conversations that you and I have had before is all about not having extra steps for users, but protecting them in a way that they are protected. And a lot of the time, there's something called negligent insider threat or outsider threat, where somebody doesn't realize what they're doing, but they're still trying to be safe. And yeah. now the attackers, as you said, are much more sophisticated. And it's not just trying to trick, they play on human emotion. What's going on in the ecosystem today? What are people passionate about or worried about? Sending something that might encourage them to move quickly without thinking about what the security is. And the bottom line is the end user shouldn't have to think about it, but no, know for certain that they are protected. And I like the fact that you really highlight that because that's a very important piece in security of not having those extra steps, but knowing, knowing for certain the protected site is the protected site and not having to dive deeper and try to figure it out yourself. So thank you for sharing that. And could you talk a little bit deeper about the piece of no extra steps for users on the side of being protected? Yes, this is what we, the pro proactive that I said before, because the user, as you said, the user are not so, so most of the user are not so sophisticated. Right. And then they give them multi-factor authentication and biometric and other stuff, and it's too much for them. So I think that, uh, yeah, they want to get it automatically. So it means that you need uh, products and solution that actually protect the user, actually warn him, uh, for example, or if we are talking about uh, fake sites, don't enter to these sites or give him like something that show him that he's in the right side, like watermark or other sign that show them that they are on the right side and genuine side. They don't need to think too much because they don't have time to think when they are working online. It's fast. And uh, so you need to, to protect them. Of course, also you need to notify the organization with all the users that try to get scammed or got scammed that then they can send them like, uh, change your password or many other actions. But user must get a, a lot of this stuff, protection automatically and proactive. And this is, I think, must what need to, uh, you know, the right product today in the market that uh, protect the users. They must have real time protection to these users because they need to think about the organization, need to think about them as a not sophisticated users that access and always can, many of them can get, got, get scammed because they are, you know, they didn't, they didn't remember, you know, and actually type their uh, multi-factor or the code that they got to, into the, to someone else that actually access to their site, to their users and more. So I think the main, uh, you know, uh, protection need to be proactive in real time. No, I, I very much agree. And I think this is almost like a multi-pronged approach, which you must have multi-factor authentication, but you can't forget about site authentication as well in a way yeah. that is very apparent for the users to understand and know without doing extra steps, second guessing themselves, circumventing it, going around the extra steps. As we know, you're thinking about the way we work today. We worked at warp speed. We need to get things done. We're multitasking. So how do we remain safe while we're multitasking and being proactive in your cybersecurity stance is very critical, but also, as you mentioned, reporting back about anything that is wrong is also important. It's not just putting it out there. It's doing the rest of the job, proactive and reactive hand in hand. And we also discussed issues with SSO solutions. And as we know, SSO is widely adopted by enterprises to protect their employees, but is this solution foolproof as advertised or is there more to it? I'd love for you to share that with our audience because sometimes things are just, okay, well, that's what everyone does, so we'll do it. I'd love to hear from you your perspective on that. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not foolproof. It's very important to have SSO because then you don't need to access to many uh, applications with do different passwords. And But the issue with this is that you have one login page 
that through this login page you access to all your systems. So if you know, then it's uh, vulnerable uh, and it's not sa safe enough. But I tell you an example. I got a few times in the last few weeks. I using also we using SSO, and I then the the best way to get your credential is to send you fake login page that look exactly the same like your login page. You put your credential. Now, mostly they are you know, they urgent. They do it like urgent. Or oh, somebody change your password, change it immediately because you, you freeze your account. But it's not true. It's a scam. You don't know. So what I did, you know, I tried to investigate. I send it to our DevOps guys and, uh, you know, but most of the people will access what we, from our analysis and talking with customers, between 15 to 25% of their employees fall to these scams. The problem with these scams is that when you get this credential of the employee and you put them in, in the middle and other sophisticated way, you can access to the data of the organization. And then you can do ransomware, you can steal data. This is a lot of the ransomware still from theft credentials. So yes, look, to have SSO, it's very important, but the way to protect it is to make sure that if somebody sends you the wrong or fake uh, login page, again, what I talked before, but this is even more critical, then you need to alert to the organization and to the employee that actually it's not the genuine login page. This is very critical because this can cause a lot of damage to the organization with ransomware, leaking data, and all of these problems. Yes, of course. I, it's all those things. And even think about reputational damage. You know, every yes. company is 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 combating for the same type of space. Reputation is critical. It's stellar. You lose a reputation of a company. Company spends millions of dollars to try to regain that. But once there's already a blemish there, it's not easy to recover. So having all those pieces at play, it's critical to be proactive there. So that is super important. Israel, any other pieces or maybe a little bit of a cybersecurity um, example of something you're seeing now in the ecosystem that you'd like to share with our audience as just like a helpful hint going forward? Yeah, what we see a lot, again, uh, I, ransomware is something that organization really, really concerned about. What they are telling, you know, we are not sleeping at night because of this. Also transfer monies and uh, stealing uh, credential of uh, users that, you know, especially in financial institutions and banks and other that are afraid from using this to steal money. And because at the end, most of them, some of them because of regulation, that they have in some countries, they need to pay the customers. It doesn't matter why he, and how he lost this money. So yeah. I, we see a lot of uh, attacking from uh, that trying to, to do ransomware. And this is where very critical, most of them through theft credential. So very critical, what I said before, to secure your SSO with, uh, and how customer told me, you know, I'm not sleeping at night because of this. So anything that can strengthen the security uh, the, of the, this SSO uh, login pages, uh, I'll buy it. And uh, also we see more and more today that the organization care about their customers. They, it's their problem. They see it as their issues to protect their customers from follow to this game. So this is a trend that I see more and more. Even when you are going to passwordless and biometric and all of this, they still want to show to their customers that they protect them, they're not for, afraid to access to their application, to their size. Yep. No, very important, Cher Israel, and thank you for your insight into these very important topics. It was really a pleasure speaking to you today, and I look forward to speaking to you again real soon. Thank you. Pleasure talking with you as always, Shira. Thank you. Thank you.